the Joe Rogan experience. It's amazing that you're like you're so uh, entrenched in them. Yeah, you seem like a pretty pretty together dude. I think so. I mean, I'm, kids changed me. I mean, I got I got two young. I got a two year old and a, and a five month old. And my wife changed me. I mean, I never thought I'd get married. I mean, I was living when I got on hoarders. I was living on a buddy's couch. I was cleaning up shit for twelve bucks an hour. Literally <laughs> shoveling shit for twelve Where? bucks an hour. And anybody that would hire me. Like a dog, like people's dogs. No, or? people's houses. I'd go into a hoarded house and oh. clean up their shit uh, for you, twelve bucks you, an hour. So you, before Jesus. the show, even you, yeah, you, I was. I've become... been cleaning houses for four years. I hit when I hit rock bottom. I mean, I literally lost everything. I was living on a buddy's couch for two hundred bucks a month, and I couldn't come up with two hundred bucks. The third month, he was like, "Dude, you know, you're, we're thirty, man. Like, you gotta, you gotta do something, man." I remember. I'll never. I mean, I talked to my old podcast. I my thirtieth birthday. I call. I was engaged to another girl. And I realized, I was like, my life is a fucking joke. Like, I can't pull her into this. I'm not. I got no business being married. And so I called off the wedding like a month before I was going to get married. Wow. And it was, that was a hard decision. And I was living on my buddy's couch. And I, it was my 30th birthday, which, you know, is a milestone in your head. And I said to my, my mom, I was like, well, what do you want? It's been a hell of a year. And I was like, I need a pair of running shoes. And I couldn't afford, I was trying to run a marathon that year. And I couldn't afford a pair of shoes to run. I didn't have enough money. I owed like a hundred grand in credit cards and I mean it was scary. <coughs> so I started cleaning up old ladies' houses. Wow. And how'd you yeah. get that job? Like how did I you- my dad died. The, the biggest thing, important thing in my life for me was my dad dying when I was twenty four. And that changed my life. I mean, my dad I was a fucking asshole. I was just a piece of shit. All I cared about was drinking, gambling, and nailing women. All three great things. Don't get me wrong. I mean, my twenties were really fun. Sounds like you had a good time. I had an awesome. Why did you, so <laughs> <that? laughs> you stop? Had a blast. I really well, did. You're talking to a guy yeah. who I, I spent a good deal of my youth in pool halls. Yeah. So you. So know, I, I mean, a hustle. I was a hustler, man. Gambling yeah. addicts. Yeah. On a regular basis. It's, but see, it's but you very very common. Yeah. I mean, for me, I didn't. I hadn't honed my hustle in the right place. I'm still a hustler. I'm just doing it on in TV a in way. a positive way. Yeah. I never change who I am. I'm just able. I've learned I'm able to make more money in a positive way than I am right. in a negative way. How People you, don't talk like I talk. They don't say the things I say. And I've learned just being on, brutally honest is the best hustle there is. Well, how did you get into this environment where you were around like gamblers? And how did how did all this happen? Well, oh man, I just I love the first time I went to casino. I fell in love with it, man. How old were you? Uh, college. This guy uh, George. So that's when you became a gambling addict. Yeah, Before George. Then, yeah, this guy George Roman. He had Tourette's. Really cool dude. He was a very confident guy. He had Tourette's, but he didn't give a shit. It was like your problem that he had Tourette's, not his. Wow, that's awesome. He's a very confident guy. <laughs> and so I was like very attracted. I was like, man, this is a cool fucking guy. Right. Like he put it on you. He did not care that he had Tourette's. And he would get the hottest chicks at school. He's wow. a really awesome, confident guy. And I, my dad always told me, he's like, you're never going to be the best looking guy. You'll never be the hardest working guy. You got to be the most confident. Because I think that's your only in. Like you wow. got no other valuable Dad thing. Dad just broke you off. No, he just was honest. <laughs> he said, "He's like, you know, listen, son, yeah, you're not going to be rich. Yeah, you're not going to be rich. You're not going to be any here's of that your stuff. dick. Here's a rule. Yeah, you ain't got a big dick. Guy. It is what it is. <laughs> and my dad got mad, mad women. I mean, he got and he was so ugly, but he just he women just loved him. He knew how to. He talked man. honest. He talked honest, and he treated them like he treated them with respect and as a woman. Uh-huh. And so I learned a lot from him. But when my dad died, I went to this little place called Comfort Zone Camp. It's a camp for kids that have lost their dads. And so I was in L.A. We helped to build the L.A. camp, and my wife and I did. My, but I met her there. And, uh, but we helped build these camps for these kids that all their dads had Biden, uh, died in drive-bys. So you meet all these 12-year-old kids that are going in. You know, they're getting recruited by gangs already because their dads have already – their 23-year-old dads, you know, have been killed, 25-year-old dads. So we learned – I mean, I just – grief was a huge part early on. And so for me, like, when I got out of my really rock bottom and I realized it's time to get going, where I – figured that out the the doing good versus doing bad was at this camp i would i got addicted to that camp i volunteered every single weekend and i would just i mean I'd go away for three nights and hang out with these kids and that's when i got my new addiction was then wow that's and it, was, it changed my life that place changed my life. i met my wife there I, I came up with a new business my business clutter cleaner i came up with it there helping these kids i met a lot of great women and met my wife there so i mean i wouldn't have what i have how did you pull yourself out of the gambling spiral you said you found yourself i in ran a like a fucking chicken man i mean i got my ass kicked by a bookie right and you the night bef- I owed forty grand. The night before, I had ten dollars left to my name. I knew I owed this bookie. When it was, I mean, I think it was forty grand, and it was a lot. I knew I only had ten dollars in my pocket. My girlfriend was waiting for me at the. T- I was in Lake Tahoe. She was waiting for me at the top of the hill up at Heavenly, and I was gambling all night. I can't. I had ten. I had five dollars in my mind. I thought I had five dollars at the end of the night, 
And I was like, I better put this down. I got to get a cab ride home. So I was giving up. I had five dollars to my name, and I owed forty to the bookie. But forty thousand. Yeah, which for a twenty-four year old kid, make it, not making that is a lot of money. And so I put the chip down, lost, came out. I had no money. I lost my last dollar. Came out, and I had nothing. And it was like I got a fucking problem. And so I was looking at the cabbie, and, the, and he's like the guy that drove me back every night. And he was like. He, you know, he looked at me and I was like, I got no money, man. So I started walking uphill five miles uphill to the ski resort. Tahoe is a very uh, awesome, isolating place. So it was a five mile incline road as we went up. And I'm walking up this thing, and he came up, picked me up, and he was like, dude, you got you to gotta get your life together, man. You got to quit gambling. And I remember this. And at that point, I was still judging people. And I was like, looking at this, I was like, this poor, stupid cab driver no god knows what happened to him but i was totally judging him right yet he's saving me he's picking me up and so i'm still treating this guy like in my mind like a piece of shit and he picks me up he drops me off and i'm like can i give you anything can i can i any he's like dude just stop gambling and he looked at me like just fucking stop and that's what made you stop well and i called my mom the next morning and she's like you're on your own so then i went i called the bookie and i was like i don't know what i do man i don't have the money and um, i mean this was like a movie he's like no worries man everything's gonna be fine We'll work it out. What do you have? I was like, I might be able to scrounge up $1,000. He goes, no worries. Come on down. I'll meet you down this afternoon. So I was like, this isn't like movies at all. This is great. This, we're going to work it out. And I went down. He took the 1000 bucks and he beat the shit out of me. Broke my nose. I totally was just clueless. And he, he just he broke my nose and beat the shit out of me. That was my rock bottom. And I was wow. like, what the fuck am I going to do? So I called around. I called an old boss, and I told him what it. My mom had already said, "You're on your own. Find a legal way out." And that was the night where I put a lot of dumb shit on the board. I mean, I was like, "All right, I'll just be a prostitute, or I'll do whatever." Like, I was like, I'll, "I'll," you know, I was like, "I can be mentally strong. I can figure this out." And I was lying to myself, saying, "I can figure this out." Wow. And so, ended yep. up an old boss got me a job in Chicago, and he goes, "When can you get?" This was a Tuesday night, and he goes, "When can you get there?" And I was like, "Friday." He goes, "You start Friday." They're going to pay off the bookie, but you're going to have to work for a year to pay. They're going to take it out, piece out every night. Wow. And I was like, great, thank you. And I literally, my buddy, I didn't have money to get home, so I had to play poker that night. I borrowed 50 bucks from a buddy and played, won enough money playing poker to get gas money. Oh, my God. And that's how I drove home, and I never gambled again. Really? You just quit? I quit. Cold I ran turkey. away. I, and I still run away. I, I still run away today. Wow. I just don't, I mean, like, this is the worst week for me, the first, uh, the NCAA tournament. Oh, you it's were a killing basketball me. person? Killing me, man. Oh, my God. I love it. It's my so do you still watch it? Oh, yeah. Love it. Oh, wow. No. It. Is it, I just what? don't do the sheets. I delete all the emails. I just can't do the sheets. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, so you're just love battling it. it every day, huh? I, you know, I don't... Sort of? Well, you have a handle on it. Yeah. I mean, I haven't gambled in eight years. I, I don't really... Eight years? Yeah. I'm, I, kid, I mean, my kids are just wearing me out now. I don't really have the effort for that kind of stuff anymore. Does it still draw you, though? Every like once cigarettes? in a while, I get that itch. Yeah. Really? Every once in a while, I get that. Like, I had it this year. I had a really bad itch. And I had wow. a flight to Vegas to do a Hoarders episode. And it wasn't even in Vegas. I just had a three-hour layover. And I was like, fuck, yeah, I'm going downtown. And I got excited. And I hadn't Whoa. had that itch in a long time. Like, I can drink. I can smoke. I can do whatever because I can walk away. Mm-hmm. I can't walk away from a table. That's my weakness. Wow. I don't know how to walk away. If I have a dollar or ten grand, so I'm going to fucking it blow your, it. your special brain chemistry, whatever it is in your mind? For me, that's when, my when that's gambling it. gambling comes yeah. up, you just bing. I love it. Connect. Like, that's my ultimate way of shoving it to the man and like, I'm better than you. I can do this. And really? I, you know, that's for me, what it is? Yeah, it's a self-worth thing. I was looking for self-worth. So a gamble. How do you get self-worth out of gambling? For me, that's where it went, man. That, I mean, wow. for you, you might get... I mean, where do you get your self-worth? I don't know. I get I'm it. trying on, to think about it. Yeah, my new thing now is like... Like, I really know that I'm making a difference on these podcasts. So I dig that. I'm starting to get it. That's where I'm what getting my What is your podcast rush. called again? It's called Five Decisions Away. Five Decisions Away. Yeah. And what, what is essentially, what is it? Well, about? it's about, it just recounts all my mistakes over the last 15 years. I, I was doing a hoarders where, uh, in New York City where this guy had a mass, he had an acre in Brooklyn, a massive property in Brooklyn. This guy had inherited it from his dad and it was, had about six feet of bicycles all the way through the yard. So an acre at six feet high, think of the metal. The value of that metal was I mean, probably 100 grand in metal. And he had a bum living in his yard. So inside the hoard, there was a bum living there. Oh, my God. And that was one of the things we had to clean up. We had to get rid of the bum. So I was literally, I mean, this is two years ago. I'm sitting here in, a, in Brooklyn hanging out with this bum. His name is Gregory. I'll never forget him. And I was like, and this is the cool thing about hoarders. I get to meet all these dudes. Right. And I was like, all right, Gregory, how'd you end up here, man? Because he had, I mean, he had a bunch of like uh, 40 ounces he had a bunch of he had a bunch of these Magnum condoms, and so I was like, <laughs> "Fuck yeah, this guy's getting more ass than I am, and he lives in a fucking shack." You know, and he's being responsible. Turns out he was huffing. I didn't realize he was huff- he was just huffing gasoline. 
huffing gasoline yeah. with the condoms? Yeah, they would fill up the condoms and then uh, with the fumes. And then oh I thought he was getting ass. I didn't God. realize he was just trying to get high. He kicked but, me in the nuts. You, but know? you want to talk about a, sh- uh, a job that must keep you grounded in, in like Absolutely. the possibilities of reality. Not necessarily your reality, but the possibilities. Every, and this, that's, the, that's what we came with five decisions away. Because uh, back to it, we didn't even finish it. That bum sitting in the yard, I asked him how he got there. And he goes, oh, I was a stockbroker. And I was like, get out of here. Whoa. And I'm like, either he's full of shit or this is real. So I went with it, you know. And I was like, what do you mean you were stock? He goes, I was a stockbroker and a girl broke my heart. And I go, you're telling me you're living in this guy's yard because a girl broke your heart? He goes, well, I got addicted to crack too, but the girl broke my heart. And I was like, yeah, the crack might have something to do with it. But he lived in a fucking shack. And so I looked at the camera and I go, I guess we are all really five decisions away from shit in a bucket. Yeah. Wow. And and that just stuck. And when I said that, it, people ran with it. And I'm clearly five, I've had many five decisions away from shit in a bucket. And I mean, a couple things different happened, and, I, and my life could have been totally different. Yeah. It might not even and be five. It could be one if yeah. it's a bad one. 